Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to this unseen video. Little bit quiet today, right? Obviously the big news was the tease on WhatsApp and also that superstars have arrived in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. And so we've got footage of them arriving at the hotel, quickly going down and hitting the beach, right? All that kind of stuff. We do have something massive in this video, though, right? There is something massive in this video. Something which I honestly can't believe. Uh, it is really dominated conversation, and we've got a massive update uh, on that, right? I'm not going to show it straight away because there's some stuff in this folder which actually relates to it. So I want to show you this folder first, then we'll have a look at it, and then we'll move on to other stuff after, okay? So here, Bray Wyatt fans said the WWE experience outdoor screens uh, are in preparation for the wrestlers tomorrow. The press conference is going to be held here. Just focusing on this for a second, I've not heard anything about a kickoff show. You know, normally before SmackDown, they've been doing a bit of a kickoff show where they'll have the crowds and they will be on a stage and they'll just tease the matches. I wonder if there's not a kickoff show because we don't know the final yet for the men's and the women's king and queen of the ring. So I wonder if that's just prevented a kickoff show or maybe they're going to do one and they just haven't announced it yet. But either way, as of right now, I'm not aware of a kickoff show, but that does seem to be a stage that has been set up in preparation. So Bray Wyatt fans as uh, the press conference, the press conference is usually after the PLE, the kickoff show is normally just before SmackDown, actually. And then we do the kickoff show, we do SmackDown, and then the next day we do the PLE, and then after that we do the press conference. So I'm in a bit, I'm a bit in the dark as to what this is. If there's a kickoff show, we'll stream it, and I'm interested in it, but I've not heard anything. But anyway, Bray Wyatt fan says, by the way, look at what I found behind the press conference. It's a Nightbirds. Uh, I think this is really interesting. I feel like this is probably always there. I don't think that this is like anything in particular in the sense of they've planted it there or it's a clue or anything like that. I mean, this is the WWE experience. This is where they've got all that kind of interactive stuff and exhibitions and everything. It's a place I'd like to visit, actually. Uh, so, you know, I, it's got they've got to do it here. Yeah, it makes sense to do it around here. So I'm thinking this might just be a bird. Maybe it's something to do with Jeddah or Riyadh season or something along those lines, because I can't see them making this for uh, the new group's arrival. That is, uh, look at the size of a person in relation to it. So um, it's a great spot, right? Take nothing away from Bray Wyatt fan. It's a great spot. But I'm thinking this is probably not connected, but still something that is very much going to uh, grab attention, I'm sure. So excellent work by Bray Wyatt fan. Fiend Legacy. Shout out to you, my friends. And um, you've made me question now what's happening with a kickoff show. So uh, I'll have to look into that. Uh, TG1983 said, I'm not sure if anyone's already said, but that note, I will see you all soon. And the hidden word, I don't think it's hey, I think it's they. That would make it they will see you all soon. So uh, let's just go to it. This was what we're talking about. So here you can see that we've got this note and it seems to say, I will see Right. We think it's C because that looks like an S there. You can't actually see the letter, but it's like these, I don't know, these invisible letters have kind of shot up a little bit. You can see the I just above the I, the L just above the L, the W just above the W. So they've kind of like just shot up a little bit. Well, that looks like an S, doesn't it? That looks like an S. So that would mean that that's actually here. So that's just shot up to there. So I think it is I will see and then you is probably hidden. You all soon. And that would be soon here, right? So feel good about that. But what's this up here? This is away from everything else. And it says, it seems to say, hey. But people have rightfully pointed out that there is something here, but I don't, I can't see the top of the T, so I can't tell if that's connected to that or 
I don't know. It's a, a bit of a tricky one. I mean, what I would say is it's not too important because if it's they will see you soon or hey, I will see you soon. I suppose I suppose it might matter in the sense of us knowing how many people we're about to see. But uh, either way, we know that the group's coming. We know that there's five members. Uh, I'm thinking we're going to get a much bigger clue tomorrow. So hey or they. Fine fine but yeah you weren't the only one to point that out but uh people uh lots of other people were like i think it's they so that seemed to get a bit of a conversation going from earlier so excellent well spotted so tg1983 shout out to you my friends uh mark williams said the e and the e are written differently on r and meat and it is true uh you can see that uh one of the e's is quite square and then the other one is a little rounded we found that before actually i remember this being a topic of conversation before where those notes from the qr code last week they were had different e's but it was the same person in the chair so I, I don't quite understand that. That's something we didn't touch on, actually. The fact that the even the notes, you know, you remember when we had uh, all those pictures before? I think, like, there was uh, 18 notes and then two other pictures, one of a mirror and then one that told us about going to Twitch. Uh, well, those notes in those pictures, the E's seem to be written a bit differently. Some were square and some had a more curved back. So very strange. And so it seems like that has occurred again here. So uh, again, just something to keep an eye on. Um, but that was noticed before. We never got an answer on that. Right here, uh, definite proof that in the WhatsApp pictures, they were taken in the therapist's office. That is 100% the corner of the notebook, which is a good spot. So in the corner of one of the pictures, you've got this kind of blurry multicolors. Well, actually, if you look, you can just see the outline of the trees that were on the book her notebook so uh that was in the latest pictures i think we felt pretty good that that had been taken from her office i think there was like the floppy disk there was some sharpie pens i know sharpies don't matter but it was quite clear that this was not in the cabin in the woods this felt like it was back in her office so uh someone just spot in there the uh the book the notebook now this is what the big reveal is going to be, right? Going to be. So you might remember that we had that picture that had an hidden image in the background, that news article that had a hidden image in the background. You might also remember that in the backgrounds of the other article, you know, the one that was uh, about her going missing and it said LA Times, and you could just make out in the background of that one as well that there was a news article and we've looked into it and we tried to work it out. I think we've got an answer on both, <laughs> right? That's big, in it? That's big. I don't make these promises and then not deliver, right? I always, if I'm going to come out with some big kind of tease, I'm going to try and deliver on it, right? So uh, here's the heckler, right? So this was some of the work, just, I mean, just a tiny bit of the work that went into it. I mean, we had so many people looking into this. So the heckler said, I wondered too if there was a crown above the name of that brand. It looks like something above it, which could still signify King of the Ring. It's hard to make out, but it could be. I've been looking up all vintage oil companies, trying to find the picture from that article. Uh, 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 mate, I know. <laughs> I know. If I, go, uh, if I go here, this is what we're talking about, just as a reminder. And you might remember over there, it says Los Angeles, and then it talks about that bakery. And then this was discovered, right? And uh, you can see 12 minutes ago, just before we started recording, you have got to be joking. That's what I've just sent out, right? That's what I've just sent out. And you're about to find out why I sent this out. Right, so uh, let's go back down. So uh, this was the work done by the heckler trying to work out what that hidden thing was. Here it is again, right? Dripzilla said, I think it's some kind of car ad the motto matches the logo for Moto Guzzi. So there's Moto Guzzi, and you can see Moto just here. 
So I do agree the font's very similar to uh, Moto Guzzi. Um, it was a good shout because maybe that was like the bird there or something. It was a, it was a good shout. Uh, but again, we've got an answer. Uh, Bob said, it's probably not Moto. Maybe it's Motel. Once again, maybe in Vegas, which I thought was excellent. I thought that was excellent. That not being Moto, but actually being Motor, motor or Motel. Maybe that is an E. So I thought that was a, a good way of getting us to kind of think out the box, right? So uh, you can see just a little glimpse of the work that people had done there. I am going to give you the big reveal in a second on that. Uh, just got a couple more bits here. So uh, uh, Microwave said, this shirt's on WW Shop. It's got me puzzled. Uh, the other looks like Howdy, but this image doesn't. Not the original Howdy. Are those tombstones at the bottom? And this is what I said. I said it looks like a silhouette of a cave person. So, you know, the person in the cave staring at the wall. I remember there being like maybe the first image that we ever saw of that. It reminds me of that person, right? Staring at the wall. Inside of the image is a giant bird. I'm sure you can see that. On a building, right? I think that's a building, right? At the end of a pier. And so I look at this and I can see water. And I can see, you know, the, the kind of supports for a pier. And that's like the building at the end of a pier. Giant birds on all within the head of this uh, cave person, right? I don't know what the message there is being sent. Like, uh, people have gone, well, what does that mean? I'm like, I don't know. We haven't seen a pier. I don't know. Um, but I thought this was excellent from Averted Vision. Averted Vision says, in the Bray Wyatt documentary, Becoming Immortal, didn't Jojo say that he had proposed to her on a pier? She said she would never get rid of an art piece he did because it reminds her of that moment. And maybe, maybe, maybe that is connected to Jojo and uh, where he proposed to her. I can't recall that moment, to be honest, where she spoke about being proposed to at the end of a pier or on a pier. But uh, honestly, I've got no other theory as to why that is here. I do also wonder if this is going to feature in the future. I do wonder if there'll be a pier that appears at some point as we move forwards. And by the time this shirt comes out, does that make a bit more sense? So we've got this. We haven't really spoke on that. So I thought you'd be interested in uh, touching on that. But I know what you want. You sat there going, yeah, okay, boomer. Um, I'm more interested in getting the answer to that thing, please, because I've been up all night for the past two nights trying to figure it out, right? Well, you're not going to appreciate this. <laughs> you're not going to like this. You're not going to like this one bit. Uh, this is what I was sent in a DM, right? That's where it's come from. Someone has just literally hit me up, up with a DM, right? And they've just gone, I think this is what you're looking for. I actually don't know who this person is as well, right? I need to have a look and see, like, what is it they do? Who are you? Yeah, but this is what they sent me. They basically sent me the picture. And then from there, I was able to find it. And I found it, boom, here here this is pixabay right pixabay this is um free royalty free copyright free you can just use it in projects for free right so that would suggest that this is absolutely nothing uh i don't know why it's in the background but this is just something you can buy it is just newspapers stacked on top of each other right there's the los angeles times so that LOS, here's a, a, a dream slowly rising. Two sisters open a bakery, right? Uh, all of this. I, I mean, I'm sure people will look at that over there and go, oh my God, is that Uncle Howdy? N no, this, this is copyright free, right? I'm sure you can even find this front page. You'd be able to find out whatever that is. Uh, but it's just copyright free. It's royalty free. Here it is. Look, it was a car. Uh, in front of a motel, big eight motel, right? Uh, I still don't know quite what that is. I mean, we'd need to make that bigger, but it's, um, what's that? Oklahoma, Oklahoma Route 60 Association Trip Guide. Oklahoma Route 60 
uh, association trip guides oklahoma usa 66 oh maybe it's route 66 i can't quite make that out so uh there we go us 66 uh motel there is a car that someone thought they saw there's the thing that's been doing our head in there's motor bit there but it's covered by this page the, this page is obscuring it that's why you couldn't quite make it out are you angry i'm angry <laughs> <laughs> we've spent so long not even trying to work this out trying to work this out we spent so long trying to figure out why they were showing us this article and did this date mean anything <sighs> oh, oh, it's, oh. honestly I'm done with it I ain't doing this anymore so here it all is here it is I, I, honestly, I can't even find the enthusiasm to move on. I'll probably be watching that Twitch stream tomorrow. Like, yeah, it's, it's probably royalty free, copyright free. What do you think this image is? <laughs> Why not try Pixabay, eh? That seems to be where they're getting all the stuff from. It's like a dagger in it. Like a dagger in the heart. Oh, who sent it me? Who's caused me this pain, but also answered a question for me? Uh, Ant. Ant is the person that did it. Ant has got eight posts. Joined back in 2013, in all fairness. Five followers. No, I, I, I don't think... He hasn't got much on his account, though. Hmm. Ant, if you're watching, I'm very suspicious about you. But you seem like a lovely person. I really appreciate you sending this over. But you have also broke my heart. <laughs> I just need you to know you've broke my heart. And... But uh, also I'm very appreciative. Because if we'd spent longer on this. Oh my god. Well there we go. I mean you know what else can I say. Your heart broken. My heart is broken. There's only one thing we can do. And that's go to the perv folder. Yeah. Let's go. Per folder. I told you, it's got to have a little bit of summer about it, right? We're not just going to the per folder for the sake of it, but we do need to pick me up, don't we? So here's Kayla Braxton, right? Reason why we're showing these pictures, right? Here's Kayla Braxton looking lovely in a bikini, right? The reason why we're showing this is that is Kayla in the Red Sea. And she says, here, look, I've crossed off a bucket list item today. I floated in the Red Sea. What an experience and the perfect way to kick off my first time in Saudi. So there she is floating in the Red Sea. That's really cool. There she is at the side of a pool. There she is just uh, flashing her boobs at a load of people in the sea. She's living her best life, man. She is living her best life. So uh, there we go. Kayla Braxton enjoying her time in Saudi Arabia. And here we go. Look, we've got requests for per folder now. So here, look, you can see Lola Vice said that Shayna Baszler never let her be herself. And that's why she turned on her. So I'm guessing it's because of the dancing, which is a bit strange, uh, because she still danced anyway. But she said that Shayna never uh, allowed her to be herself. I did see someone sharing footage of Lola when she was in Bellator. And after she wins a fight, she goes into dancing. She loves dance. It's not part of her wrestling gimmick. It is an extension of who she is. She wins this Bellator fight and then just like starts doing all this in the octagon. <laughs> So uh, there we go. So there you go. Per folder. Uh, Eric. I think Eric. I think this means you've. I think officially you're in the per folder as well now, Eric. It's not just Kayla and Lola. I think Eric, you've you've been featured in there as well. So there we go. That's a claim to Eric. That now means you have to send me a sexy picture of yourself that I can show the rest of the community. Yeah. That, look, I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules, Eric. So um, please respond. Right, uh, let's carry on. We've done that. We've done that. Let's go to WWE. Uh, we've got a few superstars arriving. So here we've got the poster for Clash at the Castle. Uh, it's Bryn again. Thank you. Saying the poster looks sick and it does. Uh, here's Drew McIntyre. He said, if McIntyre loses, we 
Riot. Uh, and it looks really, really good. Uh, right, this is... It's incredible. I mean, it's incredible. This is Karrion Cross. Karrion Cross is one of the best promos in WWE, and he just never gets the TV time that he deserves. And I love the fact that whenever he gets like uh, a bit of uh, raw talk time or talking smack time, he, he always feels like he's got something to say. This is a 13 minute, near 14 minute promo. And it is captivating. It is so good. Uh, uh, Q Hicks said, there's no way you don't see the parallels now. They are on a collision course soon. Wyatt Six, TikTok. I think that Carrion has done excellent here because I think he has seen what people are talking about, what people are speculating about. And I think he's leaned into it. I mean, this setup feels a little bit like The Therapist, for example, with a single chair, a single camera. He is talking directly to us. And uh, as I said, you know, there's word of the day in there, which reminded me of Firefly Funhouse. This is a guy that really knows what he's doing. He excels at communicating. And as I said, I can't wait for him to get more opportunity. So um, what he was saying, if we actually uh, rerun it so that you can see him coming in. I mean, this is really good. I mean, we'll play the start of it. Hi. Hi. This is fun. It's just me and you. It's me and you. This is all I wanted. This is all I've wanted for a long time. And now I got it. So I'm gonna make the most of it. I just like to take a moment right now to fill you in on the details of what's been happening so we can keep track of the plays so we don't lose the narrative of the story. Stories are important. He knows. I think my important. He knows. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about that right now. But in order for me to do that, we need to address the word of the day. <laughs> the word of the day is sabotage. <laughs> we'll pause it there because it goes on for like 13 minutes 50, right? So I've got written down what he says. He basically talks about being in NXT and beating his first former WWE champion. He talks about Finn Balor winning that Universal Championship. And he talks about how he beat him and how Finn Balor came back and he beat him again. And that said to him, I can do this. I can beat these people. I can beat these former champions. And he goes through his career where he ends up beating, I think, like five former WWE or world champions in WWE. And uh, he talks about how he beat them. And he talks about how he was sabotaged on the way. He talks about being called up to Raw, having to wear that costume, that outfit, sabotaged. And he's, he's like, it's really compelling, really compelling. And uh, he talks at the end about how Bobby should have been number six, should have been the sixth champion that he beats. And he says that, uh, you know, he was just a different animal. But go back and watch WrestleMania because there's a moment where Scarlett and BFAB go through the ropes to the outsides. And he said not one of them checked on BFAB. As soon as that match was over, I grabbed my wife. I checked on her. I asked her if she was OK. I carried her to the back. But not one of them went to help BFAB. Who asked BFAB if she was all right? the good guys. You know, this is all about him showing who these people really are. So he might not have picked up the victory, but he's saying, I will show you who these people really are. And he points out that none of them went to help BFAB. And he says that he's going to continue to do that. He's going to continue to show us who these people really are. Are. and he uh he's looking forward to talking to us again and he says make sure you're tuned in uh on mondays on raw you know uh i will see you around kind of a thing it's really good man i can't do it justice um but he is excellent and as i said 13 14 minutes of very compelling promo uh then we got this look this is uh Liv morgan arriving the Liv morgan revenge tour so uh, there we go. She's got a smile on her face. She doesn't uh, say anything to my knowledge. Uh, here we've got... Uh, yeah, this could have made the perv folder, actually. But look, we got Bianca. we got Jade. Uh, we got Liv. we got Meechin. So there they are having a little bit of fun. 
uh, on the beach in Jeddah. Here is uh, Santos. I can smell it. This is it. This is my place. Well, there we go. This is it. This is his place. Here's uh, Theory and Grayson. Oh, so good. I'm my elemente. I'm my 24 elemente hours you've been on here. that plane. Yeah. Now you're filming us up a lot. That's right. That's right. <laughs> feels so good. 24 hours we've been on that plane. Now you're filming us. How polite. Uh, and WrestleVote said, I'm told that this, uh, today's episode of The Bump, the show is going to go on a five-week hiatus as it prepares to transition to the new WWE headquarters on July 3rd. So no bump for five weeks as it will be moving. Right, so that was WWE. We've done, per we've got NXT, not loads. Here's me, Chin. Responding to Tate and Paxley, Tate and Paxley said, y'all think I'm crazy, but imagine crazy on a ladder. And Meechin said, well, since Meechin is Korean for crazy, yes, they will see crazy on a ladder. <laughs> uh, and then here we've got Corey Brennan. Uh, from Fightful, he said, as Sean Rossap mentioned in the select Q&A earlier this week, there has been a push from NXT officials for Tegan to have a run on the brand. Obviously, we're waiting to find out who is going to step up and face Roxanne Perez. Uh, she's got an opponent for Battlegrounds. It's being teased at someone from the main roster. And it absolutely could be Tegan Knox. I think that was a front runner. Anyone that's not really being used on that main roster that could come back down, um, you know, there's a good chance we'll end up seeing them. Like Dana Brooke when she went back down. Like Scripps, like Baron Corbin. Uh, they didn't have any creative and so they went back to NXT. Well, if they've got nothing planned for Tegan at the moment, I could see her going down and having another run. So it's very interesting that uh, Sean and Corey are basically saying that has been discussed. There are people that are trying to get her to go back and have that run. So there we go. Very interesting. Uh, we've done that. We've done that. We've done that. We've done that. Oh, just fun and other them. Let's make our way down. Uh, look at this. So you might remember this from a previous Unseen. This guy said, um, whatever you say to like respond, I will get it tattooed. And before DiJack could respond to that, uh, he deleted that, right? And uh, DiJack did respond, I almost made a good decision. So what you were going to say, I'll do it anyway. I almost made a good decision. So that's what DiJack wanted him to get tattooed. And here he is, uh, a man of my word, DiJack. Hopefully I can get a follow back now. So there, I almost made a good decision, DiJack. I feel pretty confident that's not a real tattoo. I feel pretty confident. But uh, it's been done very well in all fairness. So I don't know that that is something he did, but there are people out there that would do this. So uh, I don't know, but it did get retweeted. It got viewed 147,000 times. So that was a, a big, big talking point today. Uh, and Dijat responded to it by saying, eat this ratatouille. <laughs> so uh, there we go. There we go. Things you didn't expect to see today. Right, uh, looks like this person, ah, they've, uh, they've shut their account down or they've gone private, right? I wasn't following this person. This person wasn't following me, but they uh, put a tweet out. So that's good. That's clever because they almost featured in this video. They put a tweet out saying to Mark Coffey, you'll never be anything more than Joe Coffey's brother. And Mark Coffey responded saying, and this is all you'll ever be. This is taking too long. When do I get to use the internet? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they must have got so much grief back from this. They've now uh, made their account private. So wise choice. Triple H's thoughts said it works every time. So how to negotiate a higher salary? There we go. Get the sharpshooter on. That'll do it. That's on WikiHow as well. Excellent. Uh, here's Zelina Vega. Look, she's got a new phone case. Who dis? And it's a uh, flip-flop. They call it something else, don't they? Um, 
chinchilla or something. But uh, yeah, it's a flip flop. I thought we're getting in the way of the flipping camera, wouldn't it? This bit here, wouldn't this bit get in the way of the camera? I feel like from a design point of view, it's one of the worst things to have ever as a, as a phone case. But um, it is sort of her thing, isn't it? She uh, obviously goes around walloping people with it. So I, I genuinely can't remember what it's called. It's not called a flip-flop, is it, in Puerto Rico? Uh, it's called a different name. I don't need to know what it is. It's fine. I, I'm quite happy with flip-flop. So uh, there we go. She's uh, got that for her phone. Oh, I like this. I really like this. It's almost that time. WWE superstars have arrived. Now, obviously, we've looked at uh, some of the others, but I really like this just because of what it is that Randy says. <laughs> I watched this the first time. I was like, yeah, yeah. And then that's it. It cuts off. Ten seconds of uh, Randy sort of going to say something, but never actually saying anything at all. Little wink in there as well. So love that. I thought that was really fun. Uh, and then we got this. Look, Chelsea Green said, I woke up this morning in beautiful Riyadh, ate my high protein brekkie, brushed my luxurious extensions and headed for a lift that it's Bailey could never complete. Life is so good when you're me. And here's Bailey going, cool. Hope you had a great day. And there's Bailey in the sea. <laughs> Just living her best life, man. Just living her best life. Right, let's go to other then. I think we've got a few bits in here, but... Yeah, just a few bits. Uh, so, uh, wrestling news blah, 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 is Stone Cold. If I never get in the ring uh, ever again. Oh, if I never get in the ring ever again in my life, I'm 100% I walked away. I'm happy with what I did. There's people who have done more or lasted longer. I had a pretty good run and I'm pretty happy with it. So I ain't got nothing to prove to nobody. So really kind of suggesting that, uh, that he's done there, you know, that he's happy. If he never gets back, he's not saying 100% is done, but he's saying if he doesn't, then he is 100% that he's walked away and he's fine with it. But, you know, not totally closing that door. So that was from Stone Cold Steve Austin on the A&E biography. So uh, Adam Goldberg. Uh, Dragon Lee, look at this. Baby. Right? Not her. Uh, they are, they're having a baby. So uh, Dragon Lee and his uh, partner are pregnant. I don't know what's being grabbed here. But, um, yeah, and his partner are pregnant. At least I hope it's his partner. I hope it's not someone else's partner. Uh, that would make these pictures awkward. But, uh, yeah, there we go. So congratulations to them. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful said after making a great impression at AEW Revolution, Sting's son, Stephen Borden, is now training as a professional wrestler. Steve portrayed Wolfpack Sting at the show and played football at Kentucky. So there we go. Sting's son is now training to be a professional wrestler. Don't know how old he is. I mean, it doesn't really matter. DDP did come into it quite late, but we know that wrestlers have a shelf life getting on to like early 40s, mid 40s, you know. That's kind of when people are wrapping up their careers. So I'm not sure how old he is, but um, that's cool. Really cool. I thought he did great. I thought his brother was great as well. The one that was in the surface thing attire. Uh, he seemed to be a little bigger but um, I think he might be a little older as well. But uh, either way, wish him all the best. That's really, really cool. The uh, legacy, the lineage continues. Look at this graphic. Arab AF, said uh, Sami Zayn. So uh, this is a Arab WWE Arabian poster. And uh, just really cool. It just looks awesome. I mean, that would look awesome, like signed by Sami. Like, I just love this, like merch from around the world i've never really thought about wwe i always associate with america of course and like 99 percent of the merch comes from there but there must be some really interesting pieces from around the world which i just looked at this i was like damn that is so i mean it's just an amazing poster anyway but um obviously he's really proud uh and yeah getting this like on the wall signed that'd be really cool really really cool so i, I love that i thought it just looked awesome 
Right, uh, former WWE champion Big E has been cast in Laid, a new Peacock comedy series. Based on the Australian series of the same name, Laid will follow a woman who finds out her former lovers are dying in unusual ways. Well, that certainly sounds like a comedy to me. So uh, there we go. Uh, Big E in a new show called Laid. Lovely words here from Lexis King. Says, happy birthday to the king of drip. Thank you for all your contributions to the great sport of professional wrestling. The most important of which being the birth of me. <laughs> Long live Brian Pillman. So, excellent. Excellent. I really... I really like Lexis King. He was excellent at the house show that I went to. Uh, he's really building up this aura around him, and he's really getting into this character. Uh, that was that was very good. And it's the last one. This this was quite a surprise. So it's from Muscle Man Malcolm, right? An interview he did with Zilla Fatsu. So he, Roman Reigns, is like one of those kids in school where they're like the crazy one and they stand on top of the table screaming. Yeah, he's one of those, you know? Here we are just looking at him going, okay, okay, wait till it's our time, you know? But we all try to be the one. But me personally, I feel like I'm the main one. So that coming from Zilla Fatu, who's uh, really put himself over there and uh, kind of done Roman a little bit dirty. So I wonder if we will see Zilla Fatu coming into WWE one day. And I wonder how these comments will be received if when he does. I'm sure this might be an interview that gets brought up in the future if their paths ever do cross. So there we go. Uh, that was Unseen. Uh, heartbreak in this one a bit of laughter in this one as well but of course we will be back later with that live stream uh, as we see what they've got for us next with nightbirds and then we're going to be back for smackdown and of course we'll be back this weekend for the live stream of king and queen of the ring thanks for watching appreciate the support as always i'll see you again next time bye for now